Welcome to the recording of the model view controller architectural pattern. The model view controller or for short MVC is a pattern that applies to interactive systems that is systems that have a human user of some sort and uh, to put it frankly there are a lot of such systems. So if you have user interaction you can consider using the model view controller pattern. Much like the model view separation principle, the basic idea of model view controller is to separate the business logic from the user interface and also to divide the user interface into two parts, the view and the controller. Doing this, we can reuse different parts of the system more easily. For example, the business rules and the business logic can all be reused as they are encapsulated in the model component or module. The view may also be reused if designed properly, as it can be separated from both the business logic and the actual flow of events in the particular application. The basic motivation for using model view controller is that different users often want different types of user interfaces in dif different situations. We can imagine that we have one user interface for an expert user, maybe more of a command line interface and one graphical user interface for users that prefer that. We also have the problem of user interface technology that uh, needs to change and evolve. For example, you may want to upgrade the user interface to a new platform uh, or a new framework or things like that so that your application keeps a modern look and feel. The classic example for model view controller is that you want to present the same information in different kinds of ways. You can imagine that we have a spreadsheet where we have a table of data. That's one form of presentation of the data. We also have a bar chart and a pie chart. And we want changes in any of these to be reflected immediately in the other types of views. Here we see the example with the pie chart, the bar chart and the table of raw data. So we have three different visualizations over this data. And when I change something, it immediately updates the other views also. You can also imagine doing this in a multi-user environment. So if any user changes any of the data, all other users' interfaces should also be updated. To solve this problem, the model view controller pattern proposes that we divide the system into three major packages or modules. First, we have the model. Here we put data and business rules, much like in the model view separation principle. Next, we have the view. Here we have visualization and low level input. That is, we call often some kind of sp platform specific visualization API or user interface framework. And we use the input that we can get from such a framework also. Key presses, uh, mouse clicks, button actions and things like that. We then have the controller. Often this is responsible for executing the scenarios that is connecting the model and the view, telling the view what to show and what data to collect. This is often at quite a high level. So for example, we can imagine that we show the course registration form to a student and this is, will be handled by the view and it returns an action based on the intent of the student. We may also need to define a mechanism to inform the view and controller if the model has changed. That is, we need these dynamic updates so that we can have all of the views synchronize if the data is changed. Often we use the observer pattern here, but we will talk about that later. There are two basic rules. You should not put any data or business logic in the view or controller. And the model cannot depend on the view or controller. So the basic structure of the model view controller then contains the three packages, the model, the view and the controller. The model may not depend on anything, so we can have no dependencies going from the model to anything else. However, the view and controller can both depend on the model. If you design your view carefully, you may actually not have a dependency from the view to the model, but this is quite hard and often requires more effort than it actually worth. 
So the relationship between the view and the model is optional. And another idea is that the views can only read the data from the model and not manipulate it directly. Since this is often the responsibility of the controller, this should often be prohibited in some way. The controller can depend on the model and the view, and sometimes the view also depends on the controller. Uh, this often depends on what type of uh, model view controller pattern you are uh, actually trying to implement. In some cases the controller uh, calls the view and in other cases the view calls the controller. It depends on how you want your structure to be. And often these two relationships are mutually exclusive. So you decide on one direction and use that uh, throughout your design. So if we implement the model view controller pattern properly, we can have some benefits. We can have these multiple user interfaces that show the same data and we can have synchronization of the user interfaces. It's easier to evolve and change the user interfaces since we don't need to change anything in the model, hopefully. Maybe adding a few service functions, uh, possibly. It's quite framework friendly and you see a lot of frameworks that claim to use some variant of the model view controller pattern. It's also good for automatic testing. The model is isolated, so that is quite easy to test. And you can also test the uh, controller by mocking, for example, the view and the model. Views in general are harder to test automatically since they often rely on some type of uh, visualization and that things actually happen. But it can also depend a little bit on what type of framework you are using there. It is quite reuse friendly also. The model can of course be reused since it's completely, completely isolated. And if you design things carefully, also the view may be reused in other projects. So if you make a really good table visualization, uh, for example, maybe that can be reused for another project. Controllers are hard to reuse since they often connect to both uh, the model and the uh, view and they are a little bit caught in the middle here and thinking about it the controllers are very specific for the actual application for the requirements that we have in this application that we are developing so it would be natural that they are harder to reuse one good benefit that is often overlooked is that it maps the requirements often to the design and to the code so in the controllers, we often find uh, classes named after actors or method names and method named after the actual requirements. So this provides a nice mapping from uh, the requirements into the source code. Uh, you can imagine that having an error report, for example, you quickly want to uh, get into the code at the point of the error. And this becomes easier if you have a clear mapping from the use type of user, what that user tried to do and where you can find this functionality, this feature in the source code. And this is something that the model view controller pattern does quite good. Model view controller often comes with some drawbacks. We can see from the basic structure that both the controller and the view are quite bound to the model. It's hard to develop a view that's completely free from model dependencies and uh, it's often requires more effort than it's actually worth. Controllers are very hard to reuse. Performance may also be an issue as we may need to update many views and controllers. If a model part is changed, this can become problematic from a performance standpoint. It also depends a little bit on how we implement this uh, an update mechanism. If it's too generic, a lot of querying may need to be done to the model to actually know what has been changed. If it's done too fine grained, it becomes hard to develop with large interfaces. The major problem uh, that I see is that it's confusing to know what to put in the view and what to put in the controller. Often you find implementations where you have a lot of code in the views uh, and very, very thin controllers or you have a lot of code in the controllers and very, very thin views. So it's hard to get the balance right there. It can also be problematic to 
get the correct level of abstraction for the model and it's easy to add methods for every type of user interface to service that specific user interface and it can be hard to know what constitutes a model responsibility and what actually constitutes a controller or view responsibility. Another thing that is confusing in the bottle view controller pattern is that there are a lot of different names and variations to this pattern. So you cannot often just say we are going to use the model view controller pattern because every developer will interpret this slightly differently. So you often need to be very specific in how you actually tend to use this pattern and, and adapt it to your particular situation.